Now let's go for concurrency control. Concurrency means two or more transaction executing on the same database. Okay. Now, if we are allowing more than one transaction to work on the same database, definitely we may find some problem, some inconsistency in the database. So to manage those inconsistency, there are concurrency control manager, which will do all those things. Okay. We know about the ACID property, right? A, C, I, D, A for automaticity, C for consistency, then I for isolation and D for durability. So what happened into the concurrent execution of the transaction, two or more transaction used to update or used to manipulate one data or one database and it may create the problem or it may create the inconsistency in the database to tackle that there is a concurrency control manager which will do that and this concurrency control manager will follow any of these protocol which are exist. So either it can use log based protocol or it can use timestamp based protocol or it can use validation based protocol or multi version control scheme protocol. So any of the protocol it can adopt and it can make sure that the database would be in a consistent state. So the concurrency management is a technique to ensure that the concurrent execution of transaction must result in a consistent database. It is responsible to ensure isolation property of concurrently executing transaction. Isolation property will be taken care by this concurrency control manager. It uses certain protocol to ensure the serializability of schedule of concurrent executing transaction, which will make sure, which will ensure which one. These protocol will ensure the serializability. Okay. Now we have to learn these four protocols related to concurrency control. So I think you got it. What is the problem the problem is when two or more transaction want to work in the same data or in the same database there might be some problem related to inconsistency of the database so we have to have some of these protocol we can use so that we can make sure that the database will be in a consistent state. Let's go for the first protocol, which is called lock based protocol or locking based protocol. Okay. To ensure serializability. So we know what we mean by serializability, right? Serializability means if there is the non serial schedule and we find the equivalent serial schedule of that non serial schedule, then that non serial schedule is called serializable. Why? Because if we are getting any serial schedule of any non serial schedule, so we know that the serial schedule always give the consistent state to take that in 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 the mind, we can say that that any non serial schedule which is having the equivalent serial schedule is called serializable. 
So to ensure serializability, it is required that data items are accessed in mutually exclusive manner. What is the meaning of mutual exclusion? Mutual exclusion means if one is accessing that data, another cannot access it. Getting it? If one is accessing that data, another cannot access it. If we are making sure that means mutual exclusion, if we are considering, it means it's just like you have the shared uh, resources in the hostel. Let's say you have uh, bathrooms in the hostel and many people want to use it, right? So what do you do? You will make sure that it will be mutually exclusive. It means one person can go and take the bath, right? Other person has to wait for that particular shared resource. At the same way, these transaction has to wait if some other transaction is accessing that data. So these provision will be taken care by the lock. It means what we do when we go to the bathroom, we just lock it after bath we come we come out and we unlock it okay in the same way if we do with the transaction then mutual exclusion is possible so it says that it is required that the data items are accessed in a mutual exclusive manner that is which one transaction is accessing a data item x no other transaction can modify that data item x to implement mutually exclusive requirements, a lock is associated with each data item. So each data item, let's say X having some lock. Lock, what is a lock? It is a variable associated with the data item X that reflect the status of the data item. Let's say I say lock X. So this is a variable log x is a variable which belongs to which data x data if log x value is some value we say that it is it is uh, accessing by some transaction so it is a variable associated with the data item x that reflect the status of the data item x which with uh, respect to possible operation that can apply to it. Now the data item X can be logged in two modes. So there are two modes of locking. One is the shared mode, another is the exclusive mode. What is shared mode? Shared mode, if the transaction TI has obtained a shared mode lock, then TI can read but cannot write. It is denoted as symbol S. Exclusive lock, it is in that uh, if a transaction TI has obtained an exclusive mode lock, then TI can both read and write. It is denoted by symbol X, simple. Now, if you didn't understand, I'll tell you. There are two type of lock of the mode. Means lock mode, there are two types. One is S mode, another is X mode. Now, what happened in S mode? Only a transaction can read. And in X mode, a transaction can read as well as write. It can perform read operation as well as write operation. So, if some transaction is reading the data and at the same time, another transaction is, is requiring the shared log, for reading purpose, do we allow? Do we allow if there is a shared law and there is an exclusive law? Okay. If a transaction is there and it has, let's say, transaction one has shared law, let's assume that transaction two has exclusive law. Hmm? Let's say transaction three came with a request of shared law. Could we allow or we do not allow? We allow. Why? Because to reading the data, there will be no harm at all. But 
if some transaction came and it required exclusive lock, then what will do? Then we have to see whether in that data there is the exclusive log already some someone has taken or not if not then we can provide the exclusive log getting it what i'm saying means shared log any time a transaction can get but for the exclusive log we have to look for is there any conflict with another log if it is then we'll not allow that particular exclusive log transaction to allow to to be in the system so let's see what happened in this whenever a transaction t has to access a data item it first requests for the log in appropriate mode on data item x if the log manager of the database management system grants the log on x to the transaction t then only t can proceed its operation on x getting it so if any transaction t want to find out want to x want to access x so first it should have some log after the completion of the operation the data item x the transaction must release the log on x so if a transaction let's say t1 has done its operation then transaction T will unlock. So there is a lock on X and there is an unlock on X. Okay. There are two procedures unlock as well as lock. But we have two flavors or two different types of lock. One is one lock is called shared lock, and another lock is called exclusive lock. Now, what is the difference between these two? Shared log is for only reading purpose, and exclusive log is for reading as well as writing purpose. Okay. Now let's see the compatibility function among the shared and exclusive log. If some transaction has shared log, and another transaction need the shared log, do we allow? Yes, we'll allow. If some transaction has shared log. And some require the exclusive log. So we do we allow? No, we do not allow. If some transaction has exclusive log and some other transaction need the shared log, do we allow? No, we do not allow. If the transaction is already having exclusive log, some other transaction need the exclusive log on that, do we allow? No. So there is only one possibility where we allow two transaction to take the log on the same data means if somebody want to read it if one transaction want to read it we allow another transaction want to read the same data we allow but the shared shared uh, log data is requested by any transaction for the exclusive log do we allow we do not allow so exclusive log is not at all not at all allow to any transaction if that data has already any log so if a data has any log exist we do not allow exclusive log getting it Let's see the locking based protocol here with different scenarios we have. So, if a transaction is reading on A, so it will take the lock first. After reading, it will make it unlock. Okay. Then, if we want to take on B, it will take the lock first. Then, it will read on B and then unlock it. By reading the data of A and data of B, it is displaying the data. Okay, fine, no problem. Here there is no modification. Now let's go to transaction two. Transaction two want to write on A. So what it will do? It will make the exclusive log. Then it will read the data. 
modify it and write it and then unlock A. Then it will take the lock on B, read B, modify B, write B and unlock it. Getting it? So locking and unlocking is going on before using that particular data. So whether you are using the shared lock or whether you are using the exclusive lock, you have to follow the same procedure. The procedure says, if you want to read or write any data, you have to take the log first. Let's see with this example. Transaction T1 require the shared lock on A. Lock manager will grant it. Yes, it will grant it. Now it read it, unlock it. Transaction T1 again, read the shared, want the shared lock on B, it will grant it. Read, unlock this. Transaction T2, need the exclusive lock because there is no lock on A exists because we have already unlocked it. So it will grant. Then there is a read, update, write. Then there is a lock, unlock on A. Then there is a lock request on B, which is the exclusive log. Do we allow? Yes, because it is already unlocked. So it will be allowed. Read, update, write operation, and then unlock will be done. So this is a serial way, right? Using locking and unlocking of data item X in a transaction does not guarantee serializability. To ensure serializability, it is required that some transaction in a schedule S must follow a set of rules called locking protocol, which indicate when a transaction may lock or unlock each of the data. Now we have the locking protocol. We know what do you mean by lock. We know what, what are the different locks are available. Now we'll go to the actual protocol, which is called locking based protocol. Now the locking based protocol says that for granting the lock, what we have to take care. When a transaction requests a lock on the data item in a particular mode and no other transaction has the lock on the same data item in a conflict mode, then the lock can be granted. It means if the request on any data for the log will be done. Then in that data, we have to see, do we have any other log exist? If no, we'll grant it. Suppose a transaction T2 has a shared mode log in a transaction item and another transaction T1 request an exclusive mode log on the data item. So T1 has to wait for T2 to re release the shared lock mode at that time, the transaction T3 may request a shared lock mode on the same data item. The lock request is compatible with lock grant to T2. So T3 may grant the shared lock on the same data item. At this point, T2 may release the lock, but still T1 has to wait for T2 uh, may release, okay, T2 has to wait for T3 to finish, but again, there may be new transaction T4 requested the shared log on the same data, it and it grants the log before T3 releases. So it is possible that a sequence of transaction that each request a shared mode log on the data item, but T1 never gets the exclusive log on the data item. The transaction T1 may never make progress and 
is said to be starved. We can avoid a starvation of transaction by granting lock. When a transaction key I request a lock on the data item X in a particular mode M, the lock is granted provided that there is no other transaction holding the lock on X at that mode that conflict with M. Second is, there is no other transaction that is waiting for the lock on X and that make its lock request before TM. Now the whole thing is, I am telling you what, what it want to say. It want to say that there are a transaction T2, okay? And it has a lock called share on X, right? Not T1 king. Which one? T1 king. And it is requesting for log on X, which is an exclusive log. Do we give? No. So we are not going to grant. Now, later point of time, now it is waiting T2 to unlock. Now, later point of time, T2 came with the lock request of shared lock on X. Do we grant? If there is a shared lock, another shared lock is allowed, we'll grant it. Now, after that, what T2, sorry, T3, what T2 will do? T2 is unlock. T2 has unlocked its lock. Now T2 has worked on. Now, can we allow T1 to get exclusive lock? Again, no. Why? Because T3 has the lock. Now let's assume that T4 came afterwards and it is looking for the shared lock on X. Do we grant? Yes, we can grant. Now after that, let's assume that T3 has unlocked s on x but still t4 has lock on x so we cannot grant it now the same same thing is happening again and again so t1 will go to the starvation starvation it means it will uh, it is requesting something but it is but it is not getting the request but some other transaction which is coming just now is getting all the requests, uh, what they are getting. Now what they are requesting, they are getting it. But T1 is requesting, but T1 is not getting it. So T1 will be go in a starvation. So to solve this particular problem, locking based protocol says that, first of all, we have to see if any transaction Log based protocol says a simple thing. They say that that there is if there is a transaction, if there is a transaction to which is having a log shared log on X, if another transaction came with the request of exclusive log on X, do we grant? So the first line says that there is no other transaction holding the lock on X in a mode that conflict with M, then we'll grant. But it is making a conflict with, with this, so we'll not grant. If T3 came with the request of shared lock, do we grant? Yes, we can grant. Then T2 has done the unlock. on X, okay? Now, okay. Now, it says that if T3 has come with the lock, with the lock request X, do we allow? 
So we'll go to the second part. Second part says that there is no other transaction that is waiting for the lock on X and that made it lock request before T n. So if T3 is requesting for S, even though there is no conflict with the lock, but the locking manager or the lock manager has to see, is there any prior request on X has been done? So if there is a prior request that T1 is requesting, T1 is already requesting here. So there is a request. So it is not going to grant. After that, let's say T2 has unlocked it. Now, once it will unlock, T1 will get the lock. That is called locking based protocol. This is the protocol that we have to follow. Getting it? So here we have to look for two things. First, do we have any conflict with the lock? If not, then we have to see whether some other transaction is requesting the lock prior to that current transaction. If it is, then will not allow the current transaction to proceed, even though there is no conflict of the lock. Okay. So here T3 will not allow to get S. Why? Because T1 is already waiting for it. Now, once T2 will release the lock, after that, T1 will get the lock. So after that, T1 will get the lock. Now, this locking protocol is having the variety of it. So one variety is called two-phase locking. It's called two-phase locking. Now, what do you mean by two-phase locking? It is locking protocol ensures serializability of multiple transaction. This protocol state that each transaction is a in a schedule must issue the lock and unlock request in two phases. So there are two phases in the locking protocol. The first phase is called growing phase, another is called strengthening phase. So the locking protocol we just have seen, this is okay in that there is a variety called two phase locking protocol in which we have two phases. One is called growing phase, another is called shrinking phase. What is happening in the growing phase? In growing phase, I make sure that all the transaction, all the transaction will take their lock. And in a shrinking phase, the transaction will unlock it. Means growing phase, in this phase, a transaction can request for lock on data item but cannot unlock any data. In a shrinking phase, in this phase, the transaction can only release lock, but cannot request a lock. It means that there are two phase, growing phase and shrinking phase. In growing phase, we take the lock. In shrinking phase, we'll do unlock. Once we do first unlock, we cannot make a request for lock getting it so if there is a transaction is going for the lock allow reading it going for the lock allow reading it displaying it but once it will do the first unlock it will not get any lock after that that is called that, that's why there are two phases one is a growing phase in which it will take all the lock and there is a shrinking phase in which it, they will unlock. Initially, a transaction is in the growing phase. The transaction acquire lock on data item as needed. Once the transaction release a lock, it ensure the shrinking phase and it cannot issue any more lock after that, okay? The two phase locking guarantees serializability in of n transactions if the schedule s of n transaction where each transaction ti is using two phase locking is not serializable 
then there must exist a cycle. In the precedence graph, this means log on x of t2 is followed by the unlock on x on t1. A log on x of t3 is followed by unlock on x of t2. And finally, unlock lock on x of t1 is followed by unlock of x or t3. But each transaction is in two phase locking, hence, t1 cannot issue lock request once it is in a shrinking phase. So, there cannot be any cycle in the precedence graph. So, there cannot be any cycle in the precedence graph which guarantees serializability. The point of the schedule where the transaction has obtained its first log end of the growing phase is called lock point of the transaction. So there is a growing phase, there is a shrinking phase. Shrinking phase means here, just after that, it cannot find any lock. It means that from here I have done the unlock. That point is called lock point. The two phase locking does not ensure freedom from deadlock. There is a problem with the deadlock, but it will ensure serializability. So we have to make sure that the serializability will be there for the n number of transactions. And this two phase locking is ensuring the serializability. Hmm? It is ensuring the serializability. And if it is ensuring the serializability, my database should always be in a consistent state. But there is a problem of the deadlock. There is a problem with the 